What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff, and in this video I wanted to do a short-ish review of a plugin I've been using for a little while now, which has sneakily been saving me quite a bit of time here and there. It's an animated split-screen plugin from a company called Stupid Raisins. What? No, seriously. And it's called Slice Pop. As I've ended up using Slice Pop an awful lot over quite a few videos, I realised that the time saved has really been adding up, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video I'll pop in the description box below, and of course this isn't sponsored content, so your support means a lot to me. If you could hit the notification bell next to your sub button, just means the world to me, plus you won't miss a video. So what is Slice Pop? Well really, it's there to take care of any split screen work that you need to do. There are lots of presets, and so far since using it I haven't been in the situation yet where I need a particular formation of split screen and it hasn't been there already ready made for me. Anyway, let me show you exactly what you get with this plugin. Let's do a quick tour. Jumping into Final Cut and you can see we've got all of our presets for Slice Pop down in the corner. It goes from one screen all the way up to 10 screens. I have no idea why you would ever need this, but it's there if you do. To show you how to use this plugin, I'm just going to show you a typical vertical third style preset. It's something that I use quite a bit, so I thought this was a good one to show you. So all I'm going to do is drop it onto my clip and as you can see, it has automatically placed our image on the left hand side. Slice Pop calls these zones and as you can see this is zone one and you can switch between one, two and three and it changes the position from left, middle to right. And then of course we have a line that separates our thirds and of course you have full control, you can change the color, the opacity and make it disappear if you want to and of course the width. You also have control of the position, the rotation and the scale of the image in that zone. Then you have the duotone effect where you can choose two different colours and give it a kind of funky look. This is really not my kind of thing but you know it's good to have it there if you ever need it. And then there's the feather control if you ever want to blend this zone in with the one next to it you can do that. Again not really my thing but useful to know that it's there. Let me show you now how to actually make this split screen. You'll need your three clips. I'm just going to copy and paste these just for ease and have the same clip three times. So I'm stacking them on top of each other and of course as the first one already had slice pop applied to it, this has copied across to our other clips. So with our second clip I'm just going to select it and then select zone two and that should move it to the middle position. And of course I'm going to select the third clip and select zone three. That should move it to the right position and that's basically it. And this is what it looks like having changed only the zones within the plugin. I have to mention the style of this plugin. Now it's not one that has you know one of those flashy UIs like some of the plugins out there but I love these drop down boxes which do absolutely nothing except give you a little positive message. Like here it says, why become moody when you can shake your booty? Surround yourself with pizza and not negativity. Think like a proton, always positive. They didn't need to do this at all, but I'm a positive person, so I appreciate it. I already mentioned that it's quite a bit quicker using Slice Pop compared to making a split screen manually, but how much? Should we have a race? Go. And they're off, and this is me just making a manual two clip split screen, just a simple left and right. Not forgetting of course to make the white line that separates them, and 97 seconds, not too shabby. And then here's Slice Pop, we know it's going to be faster, but by how much? And look at this, I've even taken time to turn the animation off. I'm nearly done, and there we go, 37 seconds, pretty good, I'll take that. But how about a four quarters style split screen? Here's me making it manually. Understandably, it's taking me a little bit more time. I'm not doing it very accurately. I'd normally line things up by pixels, but there we go, 194 seconds, AKA three minutes 14, not too bad. And then again, it's Slice Pop's turn and I get the feeling we're really gonna save some time this time. And there I am just being smart about it, dialing in one of the plugins and copying it across. So nearly done and there we are, 65 seconds. Come on, a saving of two minutes nine, Slice Pop for the win. I've also used this plugin to make some semi-clever scenes for my videos. Here's an example from my video about how to expose S-Log3 on the A7S III. So this is the way that I usually expose these videos. I try and find a balanced exposure so that no highlights are clipping and there's still detail in the shadows. And this is what it looks like if I slightly underexpose. You'll notice there's slightly less contrast but I do like what it does to the highlight areas and my skin tones through that. Now over to the guy on the other side over there. Thank you. 
So this is what it looks like when we're slightly overexposed. You'll notice a big jump in contrast. I'm not sure I like what it does to my highlight areas up here that much, but it looks pretty cool and quite 3D and you certainly won't notice any noise in this mode. Thank you, gents. Then there's the animation aspects of this plugin, which to be honest, I don't use. Um, that's just my style, but I imagine it would be really good for things like um, travel video, vlogging, commercial video, that kind of thing. Let me show you how they work. And honestly, there is very little to show you. There's a build in and build out, so you can tailor this to whatever suits your video. And then you can use the flip button to change the direction in which they appear on screen. And that's it. I've also used Slice Pop to make some of the thumbnails for some of these videos. I just drop them on and then grab a screenshot. Here are a few examples from said videos. It really is a super fast option if you're in the situation where you need to use video footage for a thumbnail. In terms of user experience, I really like the fact that this is a really nice drag and drop set and forget plugin. Or if you need it, there is some tweakability, but not so much that you might get option paralysis. So now thinking about value for money, and I think Slice Pop is relatively inexpensive given what you get and the time that it can save you. As I use a lot of split screens in my videos and I put out for this channel alone around 40 videos a year, I worked out that it's going to save me a minimum of three hours over a full year. Which I know, broadly speaking, doesn't sound like a huge amount, but I guarantee this plugin will cost less than you would charge a client for three hours worth of editing. So for me, it's well worth it. If you don't do so many split screens, maybe not. So now let's go through the pros and cons of Slice Pop. And firstly, it is extremely easy to use. I love the fact that it's really kind of drag and drop, set and forget. I also really love the results. I barely have to change anything on the plugin before I get exactly what I had in my head. It's a huge time saver for me, for someone who does lots of split screens in their video. Obviously this won't be the case if you don't, but then I wonder why would you have got this far into this video if you didn't. You can also use this plugin to make really good thumbnails. Probably half of my thumbnails for my videos end up being made with this plugin. It's something I didn't expect, but I'm really happy about it. And then there's value, and I know this is relative because I consider it good value because I use a lot of split screens. For someone who doesn't, it's not gonna be a good value, simple as that. For the cons, I would say it doesn't have a flashy user interface, but after that, I really struggle to think of cons. And believe me, I'm someone who really likes adding all of the cons that I can think of in these videos. I like to have a really balanced review, but alas, so there you go, I hope this has been helpful, but I want to hear from you. Is this something that you would find helpful for your workflow? Are there any plugins that I really should be checking out, maybe for review? And are you shaking your booty instead of becoming moody? That's what I want to know. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.